99% of T5s and T6s came with Vobasto heaters installed at the factory. Usually these were installed and configured as auxiliary heaters when you are driving the car at low speeds so that the engine is uh, still warm. There are a hundred nuances when converting your Vobasto from auxiliary heater to the parking heater so that you could warm up your car in the morning before you start driving. However, if you have the T6 with the Climatronic unit, the conversion is much simpler and could be done within about 30 minutes and the budget could be under 100 euros. In this video, I'll be showing you in detail how to do the simple conversion. Before you start, go to your car and check that you have a Webasto unit installed. There should be a Webasto sticker on the edge of the front door. For right-hand drive, it might be on the door on the right. This sticker confirms that there is one of these heater units installed under the front left seat. In T6s, it's a Thermotop EVO unit. Underneath your car, you have a Webasto device that looks like this. Also verify you have the Climatronic system. This is how the Climatronic system looks like. Here it is also in the T6 brochure. If you have a climatic system shown in the middle, then conversion to a parking heater is possible, but it's a bit more complex and is not covered in this video. Once you've verified that you have a Webasto with Climatronic, you can start collecting the parts. For this conversion, you will need the following. Telestart remote and receiver units, a connector for the receiver and three pins that go into this connector, piggyback fuse connector, ground ring terminal and a couple of M6 nuts, a pin for the red connector under the front left seat, and only three wires. I recommend using brown for ground, red instead of blue for the 12 volt, just like on the piggyback, and yellow for the communication between Telestart receiver and the Webasto. There is also an antenna that could be connected to the receiver unit, but the remote control will work without it within 15 to 20 meters. The original Webasto antenna is expensive, so I went for the generic Chinese antenna that worked really well, even though it's designed for a slightly different frequency. It has adhesive strip on the back so that you could stick it on the window or the B-pillar. And a few words about the Telestart kit. Only this part number plus the same one but with an A at the end will work with this style of remote. The remotes can be found online for around 30 euros and the receiver for around 50. This kit here will also work but it's older and costs a lot more. You will also need VAS 5054 adapter with Odis software or VCP to reflash the Webasto. If you don't have one of these, you can find someone in your region to help you out. Let me now briefly explain how simple the wiring for this conversion is. This is the Webasto unit under the front left seat. And this here is the control panel in the roof. I won't be covering it in this video, because I'm doing the simplest configuration. Lower down is our Telestart receiver unit. These two wires is the antenna. Pin 6 on the Telestart is the ground. 12 volt is supplied through the 1 amp fuse to pin 1. And pin 2 is the yellow data LIN bus wire that connects to the green white wire under the seat and goes down to the heater connector also on pin 2. Before making the wiring loom, I removed the seat to check if I have a green-white wire present in the red connector under the seat. Here is a Webasto factory loom that goes from the red connector under the seat to the heater itself. The wire you're looking for is this green-white wire in pin 1 of the red connector. If you don't have it, you will have to guide your yellow wire from pin 2 on the Telestart directly into the connector on the heater under the car. You can see this here in pin 2 where green-white wire is. I've got all the components ready to start making the loom. First I'm crimping the yellow data wire. One side with the pin that will go into the red connector under the seat. And the other side with the pin that goes into the Telestart connector. Now I'm crimping the brown wire. One side with the Telestart pin and the other side with the ground terminal. 
and third one is the 12 volt wire. One side with the telestart pin and the other side for the piggyback connector. And that's it. Now I just have to insert the telestart pins according to the diagram. Pin 6 is ground, pin 1 is 12 volt, and pin 2 is yellow wire for the data. Here we are, telestart kit ready to be plugged into my T6. To install the loom I prepared, I removed the left seat. First thing was to connect this ground connector to the bolt under the carpet. This is where it's located. I removed the top nut, added an extra M6 nut that I prepared in my kit, and then secured the ground terminal from my loom to this bolt with another nut. Of course I didn't forget to put the original nut on top. Now it's time to connect the data line going under the car to the heater. I am unscrewing the connector holder using the T27 bit just for ease of access. You can see the green white line in the red connector. Earlier in the video I explained what to do if you don't have this wire present. The pin with the data wire from the wiring loom I prepared should go into pin 1 on this red connector socket. Before you can insert the pin, you should unlock the connector pins like so. And after this you can insert the data pin from the loom. I made a small mistake by using the wrong pin and so it didn't fit into the connector. Therefore I just released the female pin with the green white wire from the connector and connected the pins directly outside of the red connector. Once I get back home from vacation, I will replace the pin and add everything back into the red connectors. And last wire to connect is the power line using the fuse piggyback connector. I removed the fuse with the smallest rating and added it to the lower port of the PE back. And then the telestart fuse should go into the upper socket. I didn't have any 1 amp fuses at hand, so I temporarily used the 5 amp fuse. Once done, the piggyback goes into the location of the original fuse that I removed before. So, we have three wires connected. One to the Webasto data link connection, one wire to the ground, and one to the power. All I have to do now is insert the plug into the Telestart receiver unit. Last thing to do is to connect your antenna if you have one. The optimal place for antenna itself is behind one of the glass windows in the car. The antenna connector just clips into the receiver unit and that's it. The next stage that I took upon is to reflash the Webasto heater with the firmware that supports the LIN protocol with Telestart. I connected my laptop to the car with a VAS 5054 adapter shown in the beginning of this video. And I'm already in all this software that you see on the screen. You could also use VCP software as well. In any case, if you have trouble with this part, I left a link in the description that has map of people with equipment and software that could help you do this part for a reasonable price. In order to flush the heater, I'm selecting the flush section on the right. Then I select the heater which has an address of 0018 and click to specify a local flush file. The file dialog won't show you the file by default, so you need to select the right file extension as UDS flash container. In my case I'm getting an error that activation of old versions is disabled. To enable the flashing of older versions I'm going back to the main screen, clicking on the admin button and selecting the functions configuration tab and then going to the flash section on the left. Here I only needed to disable activation of the expected idents. I'm back to the flashing screen, selecting the section 0018 for the heater and loading the flash file again. Note that the correct software version of the flash file is version B. This time there are no errors and I'm simply pressing the start flashing button on the bottom right. 
I will leave the link to the flash files in the description of this video. Notice I started to flash without the power supply connected to my notebook. Never repeat this, as you can permanently damage your car equipment if the notebook dies unexpectedly. Now I'm going to the heater section again and selecting coding to configure the heater control unit. Watch how the various options are configured here. Pay special attention to the coolant change over valve setting. This makes the parking heater heat up both the engine and the interior. The only change I had to make in my case is to change the remote control setting to RF transmitter without display. I left a link in the description on how to do this change in VCDS. When I press the on button with the remote, I'm getting the orange light in the beginning. This is actually an error code. Here is a full layout of the light codes on these remotes. The left column is representing the on key. The right column is for the off button. According to this table, a long orange light in the beginning means the battery in the remote is low. Also important to note, if green or red flashes steadily after pressing the button, it means that there is no connection between the remote control and the receiver, or that the remote has not been paired with the receiver. We will see how to deal with this next. Here you can see that the remote is telling me that the battery is low and that the remote wasn't able to connect to the receiver. Let's quickly change the CR2032 battery. The remote is quite sensitive to small voltage drops but these batteries are easy to obtain and IKEA sells them for cheap. Battery is now fine, but the steady blinking means the remote is not yet paired to the receiver after installing. Here is how you can pair your new remote. Remove the receiver fuse for at least 5 seconds and then put it back in. After 2 seconds, press and hold the OFF button until the red signal turns off. You can pair up to 5 remote controls to one receiver. Let's test the parking heater for the first time. Long green light means the command to turn on the heater was received. As you can see, even Audi or Skoda remotes can be paired. And now let's do the full heater run. I can hear a click which means the heater relay has turned on. Let's check underneath the car. You can see the exhaust gases exiting. If you are testing in warm weather, the smoke might be invisible. After the coolant has been heated up, the climatronic unit is switched on to warm up the interior. The warm-up time depends on how cold it is outside. When it's minus 15, it takes at least half an hour to warm up the engine and the interior. I have tested extensively the new converted parking heater and it is working fine. You just have to make sure the fuel tank is not empty, otherwise the heater will be blocked from starting. Hopefully after upgrading your heater, your engine will run smooth even at extreme temperatures and you will enjoy a warm car in the morning. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to see new episodes on T5s and T6s. See you soon!